Um, when you're waiting at the doctor's office, use your mobile phone, put that smartphone to, phone to work. Or um, maybe during lunch or something, just look at some of the discussion posts and see if there's any area in which you can provide value and take the time to answer some of those questions. And again, attaching the link to your status update from your personal profile will allow you to share that status update across multiple groups all at once. Just be sure that you're familiar with the group's policies. So especially if it seems to be a little bit of a salesy um, post or, or blog post, maybe like that has to do with events, like you're holding an event that, that people have to pay for, that kind of thing, you wanna be careful and make sure that it's okay to post on the different groups according to each individual group's policies. And then finally, for um, one little tip, I guess, if you have a blog post and your idea is to get people from that group engaged in the blog, just include maybe the first paragraph or first two paragraphs for that blog post and then push them back to the blog where they can get more information. You've already attached the link, um, but if not, you can, you can attach it to the particular blog post within the, the discussion post as well. So make sure that you're um, pushing them back to your blog if you want them to go to the website or to the blog for more information so that you can capture them there. In terms of group management, any group managers out there? LinkedIn group managers for your company maybe? Okay, couple of little quick tips for you guys. Um, make sure to use the RSS news feeds to your advantage. Um, you can actually embed the RSS news feed from your company's blog into the group profile. Now, if you have a company blog that just blows up and goes crazy and you have blog posts every hour, you may not wanna do that. But if you have just a general level of traffic, maybe one blog post a day or a week or whatever, um, then you can feed that RSS um, news feed for the, for the blog updates into the LinkedIn group. Also, use templates to your advantage. Templates basically allow you to go in and create automated responses for your followers based on requests to join, welcome messages, um, declining a member, or um, declining and blocking someone. So um, templates are great in terms of helping you to kind of automate some of that managerial process for LinkedIn groups. LinkedIn is also a good source for content. Um, for one thing, I actually find the LinkedIn.com um, news articles, there's typically that, you know, that area towards the top where there's three different articles that will be fed to you. That's typically based on your interest, your profile, so they're pretty much custom tailored to what you do. So that's one area that you can look for. Um, also, look at your activity feed. Go to LinkedIn.com, look at your network, see what they're talking about, see what kind of articles they're sharing, see what kind of comments they have. And if you have the opportunity to share really good content from either a prospect or a client, why not? You're double dipping then, right? So you're supporting your client, you're supporting your, your prospect, you're showing them that you're paying attention to them while also providing curated content that is cherry picked, that's good um, information, that's uh, adding value to your network as well. So you're kind of providing benefits there for everyone. And you can do that there at the bottom of, of each status update. Another way that you can pull content from LinkedIn is using RSS feeds. You can actually pull your network updates into your RSS reader. Now, huge caution here. Make sure whatever RSS reader that you're using is private. So this is private information, your network updates. Some of that information is from your private network, private information. So make sure that if you're feeding it into an RSS feeder, that, it's, um, that it will allow that privacy to be maintained, that it will not take that feed and make it public, okay? Um, in terms of LinkedIn Answers, LinkedIn Answers is a really cool little area too, and it's somewhat looked, overlooked sometimes in LinkedIn, but you can create an RSS feed based on LinkedIn Answers on any category that's available there in Answers, so that will also feed directly into your RSS reader to make it a little bit easier for you to digest and curate. Company pages, so how many of you manage your company's page? Admins, okay, a couple. So company page, very, very basics. Of course, make sure that you incorporate your keywords into the company description. That's incredibly important. One area that kind of surprises me that people overlook oftentimes is specialties. Uh, make sure that you're taking the time to fill out the specialty section on your page because that is also indexed by Google. So you wanna make sure that you're taking the time to fill out that information. Also, again, use your company blog RSS feed to your advantage. Take that RSS feed and put it directly into your, um, into your page and it will pull the most recent blog articles there and put them onto your company page. So that's generating content for your page automatically on the back end. There's also an option 
for you to do the same thing through the news module. So the news module, basically, you select whether to turn it on or off. And you can choose whether or not you want company news to be published to your company page or not. So in LinkedIn, basically, we'll go out and pull any type of news article that mentions your company name, and we'll feed that into your company page. Company status updates are a fantastic way to kind of keep your page from being stagnant. So you can provide kind of the most recent updates. You can talk about Digital Summit, for instance, that your company's at Digital Summit. Um, but again, status updates, you can attach links and you can attach video. So this is another way to kind of personalize your company page to get video up front and center on the company page itself, the, the landing page, which is where most people are going to go. You have other tabs here where people can look at careers and services. Um, but a lot of people, they go into the company page, they look at the description and that's it. But if you have a video embedded at the top, they'll probably take the time to click on that. And like the other um, example, that player is embedded and it will, show, it will allow them to watch that video right there on your page. It will also show you um, as the admin the number of impressions that you have for that particular um, status update as well. And something new, like brand new, not even released yet, that's coming out for LinkedIn pages is a new way to be able to target those status updates to your followers. So um, not available quite yet, but if you look at this, um, the image source for HubSpot also has some information about this, the new features that are coming out. But soon you will be able to send out these status updates to specific target audiences. Now, all that that does is, mo is controls what information is pushed to your followers home feed. It does not change um, what information will appear on your company page. So all of your status updates will still appear on the company page for the activity log when people go there, but it will not be pushed out to everyone's home feed. So if you have a specific status update that's maybe more targeted for a particular audience, you can target that down by the size of the company, the industry that they're in, the job function, seniority, uh, geography, and whether or not they're company employee. So um, that's kind of a neat little way to kind of do some, some target updates. Also, make sure that you take the time to add the products or services under the products and services tab. Um, this is another area where people kind of don't always take the time to, uh, to do this, but you want to make sure that you're providing that information there on your page. Take the time to ask for recommendations. Get recommendations for each product or service. You can also create ads. You can have up to three banner ads, 60, uh, 640 by 220 pixels that you can embed in your LinkedIn profile under the products and services tab as well. So you can use that, uh, that will appear on the top of your complete list of products and services. And then also include images for each product and service and include video links. There's, there's a place on the right hand side of um, each services or product tab um, where you can actually provide a link to video. And in this case, it's embedded directly into that page for that service or product. So use video again to your advantage. And then finally, you can create targeted product or services pages based on um, the viewer's location, industry, seniority, job function, or company size. So in my case, I provide social media training seminars in Atlanta that's specific to an Atlanta audience. So I can talk about just those seminars through creating an, an audience here that's targeted towards the Atlanta area to people that are in Georgia. Or I can talk about LinkedIn or, or social media training and consulting on the global reach. So for somebody that's out of the state, I can still go in and do customized group training or customized consulting, that kind of thing. So I can create um, different targets for different audiences. Right. Yes. Okay, uh, going back to uh, the question is if you can charge, what do you mean by charge the customer? So like if you're creating a company page for your client? For ourselves, if we have clients, if we feature a client as a, on a banner, you know, they let us charge that as that double click, is it tracked within LinkedIn probably? It's tracked within LinkedIn. Um, so long as LinkedIn doesn't have a policy against that, then I, I would imagine that you could. So you could probably sell that advertising space. You'd have to look at LinkedIn's policies and procedures. I'm not so sure. Um, you know if they if they allow that or not, but I would imagine that they that they would. But but definitely I'd have to look at policies and procedures. Can you tweet me, email me something that question, and I'll follow up with you too on that. So Twitter, how many of you are tweets <laughs> using Twitter? 
Okay, a lot of you actually. Now, I will say, I do a lot of public presentations and typically everybody raises their hands for LinkedIn and like three people raise their hands for Twitter. So I can tell that I'm with a group of marketers who obviously are here to talk about digital marketing, right? Um, Twitter, fantastic tool. There are about 300 million users on Twitter and there are 300 million tweets that go out every single day. Twitter handles about 1.6 billion search queries, which is just crazy. Um, that's a lot of information, but Essentially, Twitter is a social network. It's a microblogging service. It's based on SMS technology, so that's why it's limited to that 140 characters. It's limited to the, the maximum amount of characters that was allowed in the text. So that's where that comes from. Um, Twitter provides you a great platform to share expertise, to provide general advice to people, to inform the public about what's going on in your industry. Um, I recommend that you definitely provide a blend of content. So look at, again, your original or shared content. Um, kind of provide a blend of that. You want to provide some original content that you've crafted, so your own blog posts or your own um, tips, that kind of thing from your company, but then also share content from your network. And again, if you do have any questions, I will wait around afterwards. I know that we're, we started a little bit late, so um, we'll be wrapping up here in a second, but you can come up afterwards and we'll talk about it, or you can tweet me those questions again at Global Marcoms or Kate Qualdebaum. Send me those, uh, mention me in that, and you can include the the event hashtag as well and just ask your question and feel free to respond back to one another as well. So um, I don't expect to be trending, you know, but, but still, we can at least have some, some interactions. Um, so another thing that you should do in terms of content is to provide a, a blend of different types of content. So do your updates, your general tweets, but also provide pictures, provide videos, provide links. A lot of people now are very much so more graphic in terms of the way that they um, process information. So getting information in front of them in terms of video um, or, or photos is a great way to really connect with them. And then use those tweets since you've only got 140 characters, which is actually a lot, you know, once you get used to it. But um, use that information to drive people to other locations where they can get more content. So you can drive them to your website, your blog, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere that you have online content that relates to that, that tweet. I wanted to mention um, URL shorteners in terms of driving people to your websites, right? So you'll see I've got um, some postcards that are there in front of you guys. You'll see a whole list of um, training seminars. Each one of those training seminars on my link has an inc or on my website has an incredibly long link. Those links sometimes can actually I, I pulled one and I'm I'm kind of embarrassed to say it was actually a 144 character link. So that's that's really long. But um, obviously I can't even tweet that out. So if I wanted to invite somebody and say, hey got this seminar on whatever, I can't even tweet that out. It's 144 characters, it won't even fit. So URL shortening basically was born because of Twitter. So there was this um, understanding basically that 140 characters, that's prime real estate, right? So if you have a long uh, URL, say that it's 60 characters or 40 characters, um, you don't wanna give up that space in your tweet. So basically there are a couple of different um, URL shortening tools that were born for Twitter to help you with that process. And basically you can take that really, really long link and shorten it down to something that's more manageable that you can actually include in a tweet. So um, just a little note, Twitter now actually embeds um, URL shortening into their system. So if you actually go to twitter.com and include a link, it will be auto shortened by Twitter. So it's kind of um, already like an automated process there through twitter.com. But if you share a link through Hootsuite, say that you have a really short vanity URL, like I, I uh, was helping with an event, servcob.com, so that's a really, really short URL and I really wanted to keep it as servcob.com. If you schedule that tweet and send it through Hootsuite, it will still allow you to keep servcob.com, for instance, so it, it will allow you to keep that URL as is and it won't be shortened by Twitter. But there are a couple of different shorteners that you can use Hootsuite, Automatically use, uses Owly and Hootly, which are great for attaching photos and documents. I prefer Bitly when I'm creating my own URLs because that provides me some more tracking information so I can tell how many people have clicked on the link. So if you were following me on Twitter, you saw that I had the LinkedIn, um, my LinkedIn profile was actually shortened so I can count how many people have gone in and clicked on that and, and have gone through to, to at least look at my profile. Um, it also allows you to customize the link. So in that case, Typically you take a link, you dump it into a shortener and it just generates some name for you and you copy it and you use it. Bitly actually allows you to customize your link so you can have almost vanity URLs. 
So in my case, my direct link to my LinkedIn profile is shortened to um, bit.ly slash Kelly L-I. So that's kind of more of a vanity type kind of URL and, it, and it's more customized so people feel better about clicking on it as well. And it also gen auto generates QR codes. So if you're doing um, a marketing campaign, you can actually use the QR co codes that are generated through Bitly as well. A couple of other things that you can do in terms of content on Twitter, specifically in terms of branding, um, use custom backgrounds to your advantage. You can embed more content and additional content, additional information through a custom background, um, either on your personal account or on your business account. It allows you to provide more information. Also, take the time to look at your, your profile description. Um, in my case, I, I kind of allow my tweets to speak for me and kind of to the personality of who Kelly is and what I am. But I actually use keywords, in my case, for my bio because that helps people to find me based on those keywords and those things that relate to me. Um, also, make sure that you take the time to include your company website because a lot of people, as they're going through and evaluating whether to follow you or if you've retweeted them or something, then um, they will go in and actually look at your, your website. Again, lead with keywords when we're looking at, at tweets. Those first 40 characters matter the most in terms of Google. So you don't want to lead with, thank you so much for attending the digital summit session today on Twitter, LinkedIn, and content generation. You want to say the digital uh, summit session on, you know what I mean? So you're leading with digital summit or you're leading with social media or whatever term it is that relates to you. Also, incorporate trends and hashtags when and where appropriate. Um, make sure that you can create the hashtags that you include in your tweet. Make sure that you research those. Um, I, I remember I was working for, I, I do some social media for a church, and I thought, hey, around Thanksgiving time, wouldn't it be really neat to talk about like the six things that you're most thankful for? I think it was like their sixth week that they were um, in existence, and so let's talk about the six things that we're, we're thankful for. So I created a hashtag that was six things. So um, I went back in to, to track it and clicked on it, and I had not researched it beforehand. So I clicked on the six things, and it was like the six things that ticked me off the most. And every single tweet, there were only like three, and they all dropped the F-bomb, which I'm not saying that the F-bomb, that you can't do that on Twitter. I'm just saying maybe not for the church. <laughs> but anyway, so I quickly went in and renamed that hashtag and added a little bit of a customization there. But definitely research the hashtags. You know, if you're thinking about something for leaders and you're really – four more leaders in America, you know, so four more leaders, FML. No, no, you can look that one up on your own. So anyway, um, apparently all of you are very clean because you don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to hold questions to the end um, because we're running a little bit short on time, but um, do write it down because I do wanna an answer your questions. Remember, and this is something that I'm really bad about doing and you'll probably notice if you're following me on Twitter, all of my tweets were like 139 or 140 characters. It's just in my nature. I have to use all the space that's available. but. In general, if you're trying to create something that's viral, if you want something to be retweeted, you want people to share that information, make sure that you leave space so that they can do that. So make sure that you leave about 20 characters of space so that it will allow the room for RT and for your um, Twitter handle to be added there. And then also for retweets, in terms of crafting your tweet, think about um, moving the Twitter name to the end of the tweet. So instead of saying RT, Global Marcoms, and then having the, the tweet that follows, have that at the back end. So in this case, this is um, an article about the new discovery or, or discover tab on the Twitter application. So instead of saying RT Twitter, it's via Twitter and it kind of comes there at the end. So again, I'm able to have more control over the content on the front end, but I'm still crediting that back to the original source. Um, in terms of getting content from Twitter, um, lists are a great way to do that in terms of content curation. So create Twitter lists for industry experts, for clients, prospects, media, trade publications, um, credible tweets. I don't know why I like that word, I just do. But, um, but make sure that you're you know, monitoring what people are talking about. If you don't have your own list or you're kind of at a loss and you just don't have connections maybe that are in a particular industry, try Listorious. This is a great site that will give you lists of all kinds of different people that have um, expertise and that are listed the most um, for a particular topic. And then finally, you can create your own Twitter newspaper via Paperly. Um, that's a kind of a fun little tool. Um, so with that, you can, uh, can use that to your advantage. 